Hey guys, welcome back to another CEO.ca interview. Today we've got Gordana Slepchev, CEO of Lomico Metals, LMR on the Toronto Venture Exchange. Uh, Gordana, so we're talking about graphite today. Later we'll talk about some antimony gold exposure you also provide to your shareholders. But uh, let's talk about the pre-feasibility study and the engineering phase you've got going on at your flagship project called La Lutra. Um, you've just completed financing to fund what you say is the engineering phase of your pre-fees. Can you talk us through what, what really is going on right now on the ground? Yes, happy to do so. Happy to be here today and provide some updates. So we have completed the mineral resource estimate uh, that was published in 2023. So we drilled the uh, 13,000 meters, 79 holes, and that resulted in the increase of the resources. So what we have done is called infill drill program because we wanted to, um, you know, update inferred resources into measured and indicated category. And why is that important? You cannot use inferred resources for your pre-feasibility or feasibility study. So with that work, we actually did 200% almost increase in inferred resources. Prior to drilling, we had about million tons after the drilling, two mil, uh, three million tons of the measured and in, uh, indicated resources. We also have added up some inferred resource. So we have about 650,000 tons of the in situ material. As we move uh, ahead with uh, metallurgical testing, we have finished pre-feasibility level metallurgical test programs. We did quite a bit of the testing on the metallurgical side and the batteries. So we have tested half a coin cells, pouch cells, and the results show that this material can be used uh, to produce batteries. And why is that really important? You know, the, the biggest growth that we see nowadays are still into batteries, both electric vehicles, hybrids, and also energy storage. And energy storage is shaping to be one of the biggest, uh, actually, uh, sectors nowadays because uh, we need all that energy for data storage, for AI, all, all that of the information. So, you know, it's a lot of opportunities for companies to place their products uh, as we move forward. And also there are some industrial applications for, for graphite mm -hmm. as well. You know, traditional like lubricants, uh, we all know about pencils, electric motors, nuclear, steel production, uh, fire protection. It's a big um, right. on uh, there. But um, to go back to the pre-feasibility study, we did engage DRA Americas to lead the study. We're also working with Knight Piso and Norda Stilo. And what are those providers do? What do they provide? They, they provide different components of the engineering. So with the engineering studies, um, you need, of course, independent experts, third parties to actually conduct these studies. And each of these groups are experts in, in their own field. Beyond timelines, maybe we can talk about some comparables. What are your peers? What size are they? And if I'm looking at Lomico compared to, to others uh, with a project of your scale, why Lomico? Well, um, as I mentioned, Lomico is the biggest undeveloped project in North America. So, of course, uh, there are the peers. Uh, Northern Graphite is the only producer in North America. They have smaller production, 10 to 15,000 tons per year. And then the other project is more advanced than the Lumico is Nouveau Monde's project, and they're actually working on the financing. They're looking to produce about similar quantities that Lumico is looking about 100,000 tons of the flotation concentrate, and they're looking on the downstream. Something that I believe on a, a point out here is Lumico is also looking on the downstream and producing materials for anodes, for batteries. That's why we're doing all this testing, including the lab scale and the piloting that um, I'm going to get back to in a minute. But basically, Lomico is um, very well positioned to move in with uh, in Quebec critical mineral strategy and to become the next development project. 
And while I'm saying this, uh, we are supported by some significant grants from uh, Department of Defense, 8.35 million US. Uh, we're also supported by the federal government, 4.9 million uh, for the Arnold piloting. And we also have a Quebec grant. That's the work we're doing actually now with um, uh, Corem uh, on uh, actually the work on uh, uh, flotation concentrate production, and we have completed some work with the NRC on purification and the battery testing, and we'll conduct some more of that work as well as we move further. So what we're trying to do here is position ourselves as the next uh, developer behind uh, Nouveau Monde. And why is that important? Because we'll need the more and more graphite as we move forward. And it's also geopolitically very important. You know, everybody's trying to kind of position themselves uh, away from China. And China, I mean, we have to admit, they have done a great job in really, um, you know, developing that anode industry. Now, uh, with everything that's going on in the world, and also with the cost of shipping materials, those are really expensive. It makes sense to actually have that pro production here domestically in North America for North American market. It's yeah, it's a theme that we talk about over and over again. Uh, yes, with our exactly. Guests. Um, let's move on from uh, graphite for a second. As we said at the top, uh, you're providing exposure to antimony and gold for your shareholders through Yellow Fox. Um, you're an option partner to uh, Metals Creek Resources. They own the project. Uh, give us a quick update, not um, just on what's going on, but also how, how big is the land package here? Yeah, so we actually uh, started somewhere about 700 um, uh, hectares. Um, that was the original land package where the first um, discovery was made uh, on the antimony. So really the, the highest results and the highlights from the project are 11% antimony, about almost 60 gram gold per ton, 73 grams uh, silver per ton, and you know, seven and a half percent zinc, five and a half percent lead. So, uh, you know, we, very prospective area. It's located on the Dogs Bay lines, very close to Newfound Gold uh, project or the land package. So, perspectivity is there for sure. And uh, we knew based on, on the geophysical survey, and there are very limited surveys completed so far, that the package is prospective. And when the next claim on the vest uh, fr from this project become available, we actually took it because there was uh, also a known anomaly there. So we just completed the, um, you know, the, the field program. We took uh, around 700 samples, soil samples. That's now in the Eastern Alicotagal lab. Uh, it's being processed and we expect to share some results by end of the June, maybe early July on the results. And once we, of course, get them in, you know, work through the details. But the plan is uh, to continue with the second um, stage, which would happen in the fall, continue with soil sampling and based on the evaluation that we will do with phase one, maybe do some trenching and rock sampling as well. And this new land package that we acquired was uh, 30 claims. So now entire land package doubled, basically. We're about 1,500 hectares there and um, it's a really significant, very perspective, as I mentioned, on the dog uh, bay line. And we're really excited about this project. You know, anything that comes positive, it's good for the company. We're hoping for antimony, but we're happy with anything else that can show some significant results. Now, to close off the interview, um, let's go back to talking about uh, La Lutra. I understand that you expect to uh, announce uh, the completion of the pre-feasibility study by uh, first quarter 2026. Um, before then, uh, is there any other catalyst that you'd like to point out for shareholders to look out for, um, maybe have excitement or patience for? Yeah, so uh, of course, uh, uh, aside of La Luta, which is progressing, and as you mentioned, it is scheduled to come out end of the Q1 2026. We're also very excited about Rousseau projects. So with that, quite a bit uh, of the work in the fall 
2024, mm -hmm. and the results were really amazing. We outlined four zones, two fairly well, about kilometer and a half each, and two we just started work on. So uh, we just completed some work program over there on the Rousseau to prepare ourselves actually for the drilling. We plan to start drilling in the fall, of course, um, now the, the plan is being developed based on the field work and um, we have still to apply for permits. So we expect that work to start in the Got fall. It. So, um, you know, what's really interesting about Rousseau, there, there's so many really high grade samples and the highest grades we really have seen in, in the fall were about 28% carbon content. That's almost like third uh, of whatever you take out of the ground is carbon. So really, really high grades. Well, listen, um, I think overall we talked about Lelutra, Second most significant project, Russo, and lastly, Yellow Fox. So thank you for giving us an overview um, and uh, for being here. Thank you very much for the invite. Happy to be here. Uh, so far for us who want to learn more, as we mentioned, uh, the ticker is LMR on the Venture Exchange. And to see what other investors are saying about the company, go to CEO.ca.